Hey, John, it's date night. You know what that means. No, 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 no. Hand sewing. Ah! Welcome back to My Lady Disdain. I'm Sandy. And I'm John. And we're going to have a little fun today. We're actually going to do some sewing. I love sewing. I know you do. If you like sewing, please give this video a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing. We're going to be doing a lot more of this. But the reason for this video is that uh, people have said that smart doll is expensive and they might be able to buy their smart doll, but they can't really afford clothes for their smart doll. And so I came up with a super quick, super easy project that you can do with stuff that you probably already have in your house. So what we are going to make is an oversized tee, like a cut tee that you can put over a tank top or a default smart doll sports bra set. Now this is the original, the new ones are coming with the sports bra with the writing on the bottom, but still basically something that you can use to work with this. Now Cammy, uh, Cammy, poor Harper. Harper is wearing her jeans um, because if I was gonna tell you to buy anything from Culture Japan, it would be the jeans <laughs> yep. and the shoes. And then you can use the really quick top that we're going to make to cover her, uh, cover a tank top or this little sports bra. Thank you, Harper. I'm going to put you aside now. You're so polite. Do I need like a $600 machine to do this? No. Now, if you have a $600 sewing machine and you want to do this on your sewing machine, you absolutely can. The great thing about this project is you can make it as uh, detailed and tidy as you want, or it can be really super relaxed and you can do it with, um, you know, basic hand sewing skills. If you can learn to sew on a button, you can do this. So I'm going to show you exactly what we need for this project. You need a needle and thread. John's got that too. We need scissors. You got your fabric scissors, you got your paper scissors. So yeah, we both have scissors for fabric and paper because as most people who sew know that it is a cardinal sin to cut paper with your fabric scissors. But if you only have one set, just use what you have for scissors as long as they're reasonably sharp. So you need scissors, you need some paper. This is an eight and a half by 11 inches letter sized sheet. You're going to need a pen or a pencil to write with and something to use for marking on your fabric. Now this is actually a heat sensitive pen. So when I go to touch it with an iron or something, these marks will go away. Um, you might have a wash away pen. If you don't, you wanna use maybe a pencil and just try and be careful with your lines so that you can actually hide them inside the, um, the seams. You do need a ruler of some sort, some sort of measuring tool. I'm working in inches. Um, because I live in the United States and that's what we do. Um, but, you know, do your conversions. So what you need is a, this is a tank top. I have a tank top here that we're going to use and John has one almost exactly like it in orange. I'm using black and I'm going to work in white thread so that you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Um, but normally I would get black thread and it would make it look a lot nicer. Um, I gave John orange thread that matches, so his should look perfect. Yeah, I'll just have no idea where I've sewn. <laughs> so yeah, so you just want to make sure, as long as it has, I mean, it could be a t-shirt that you already cut the top of, as long as it has, still has a bottom hem, it's exactly what we need. Okay, well, let's clear this stuff away and get started. Great. The first thing we're going to do is draw the pattern. So this is going to be really, really, really simple. I specifically made it so that someone who has no experience in pattern drafting at all, or has never looked at a sewing pattern can actually do this. John and I are gonna do this together. John has actually done some sewing, but we're going to show it from a perspective of people with degrees of experience in sewing. So the first thing we're gonna do with this paper is we're going to take the top, we're going to, we're putting it portrait 
direction. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take the top edge and fold it down and line it up with the bottom. Aren't we supposed to write on the paper first? Don't you write like numbers and then colors so that when we fold it up, then you do like the, <laughs> what is that called? Uh, uh, mash, mansion, apartment, shack, house. How, mash. Are, how about mm, mansion, 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 mansion? I, I like that game better. <laughs> okay, so back to the back to what we were doing. Uh, so line it up and crease it. So John's oh. got his done already. He's ahead of me. I made assumptions. Let's see how many times that gets me in trouble tonight. <laughs> so you fold it that way. So you've got your crease that you've made. Now you're going to fold it in quarters and line it up again, do the same thing and make your crease going the other direction. So once you've done that, you're gonna open it back up to the halfway point and you're going to have a line that you folded going all the way down your center. And so what you wanna do is you wanna actually mark that. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but when you get to your end point, you wanna make sure that you've actually made a straight line. Sometimes it's better just to do dashes and connect them because it's easier to keep short lines going straight than it is long. So once you've done that, so now you've got your center point and you don't have to write center, but I'm going to. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler so you're gonna line up your ruler so that your zero point is at the outside edge of your paper. At the top, you're going to make a mark at three inches and a mark at three and a quarter. So a quarter inch from there going into the center. So we have, we have our three inch line and then our three and a quarter inch line. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just lining up my three and going back to my zero and then come in a quarter inch. So now we have our two marks. Now we're going to make this three inch line is going to be point A, just for reference. And if you want to track what we're doing right now, kind of getting an idea of what direction we're going in, this is your neckline from here to here. And I've allowed the quarter inch in case you want to fold in your neckline and make it nice and neat. But you don't, you're not, you might not have to depending on what you want to do with your top, and we'll see that later. Sorry, what's the A for? Um, we're just using it as a reference marker because I want to refer to some things later, and I'm going to refer to them by letters just to make it more simple. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is we are going to mark down, this is a big ruler, we're going to mark down an inch and a half on the outside edge. We'll do the other side as well. So you want to keep mirroring it. Okay, so now we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to do our three inch measure on the bottom, but we don't have to do the three and a quarter. We're just going to do the three. And this you only actually, we really didn't even have to do that last second mark, come to think of it, but that's okay. We did it anyway. You're just going to do a mark at three. Then you're going to take your ruler and you're going to get it roughly diagonal from this corner and you're gonna make a mark at about three and a half inches. So once you've made that mark at three and a half, you're just going to take, you can do it You can do it with a cup or a, or a plate if you wanna really make a nice sharp curve, but really all you need to do is sort of connect these lines roughly in an arc. It doesn't even need to be super perfect. That's good, that's plenty. So now we get to cheat the other side because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our paper scissors, if we're using paper scissors, and we're gonna cut away our curve. And to make the other side, we just fold our paper this way, line it back up again, and use that first curve to cut the other side. These can get set to the side. We don't need them. And when you turn this out to the halfway point, you have this. It kind of looks like underwear, actually. So if yours looks sort of like underwear, you're probably right on the right track. But we're not making underwear. And this would be really big underwear for a smart doll. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to unfold it all the way. And we're going to cut right along our crease. And the reason we're doing that 
is because you can actually create other necklines with this. Um, and I will show you a quick example of some that I did. This is gonna be my back, because it goes straight across the back of the neck. And then you can also do something with the front where you're actually making a neckline. So this is one of the necklines that I made. But for now, let's just keep it really simple and we're just gonna keep it straight across. So we can actually set aside one of our pieces of paper, probably the one that doesn't have marks. Mine does because I used a marker. But this is the one that we want, the one that we have been writing on. So now we take our piece of fabric, our tank top, t-shirt, uh, you can use a pair of wide leg pants, you can use a skirt, that, like a knit skirt that has a bottom. This is a jersey fabric. It has a little bit of stretch going in both directions, which is kind of important. You can do a sweater as well. Um, but if you do a sweater, you have to be very careful because the, um, the knits are looser and when you go to cut, cut it out, you can actually lose, have some fraying because when you cut those yarns, they're actually going to split and break. Uh, Jersey is a little bit more forgiving. And what's great about it for this project is it doesn't really fray much. Um, these, I'm using a black tank and normally it would be not a good idea to do on a smart doll, but this is a tank that I've worn a bunch of times and it's been washed a lot. So it's actually okay dye-wise. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we get our hem and I'm going to bring this up here so that we can see the bottom hem. I feel like I want an iron for this. Yeah, it's okay. Just smooth it out with your hands a bit. It'll be fine. But if you've ironed it or steamed it first or even thrown it in the dryer, like wet and pulled it right out, you should be fine. So I'm just smoothing mine out with my hands, kind of putting some pressure on it and smoothing it out. Now, if you have pins, um, you might want to use them for this. You don't have to, but it actually does make the coordination of it a little bit easier. I've actually got my wrist pin cushion and if you like it and you want to know how to make it, it is another simple hand sewing project and we will put a link to it up here and in the description. What we're going to do is take our pattern piece that we made and we want to line the bottom edge up with the bottom, the bottom hem of our shirt. Does it matter where on the shirt that we place it? No, but if you want to save some uh, fabric, because you know, if you cut it right in the middle, you're actually losing the use of other pieces of fabric that you sure. could use for another project. And I do encourage you to take a look at what you have left for fabric afterwards and try and figure out some things that you can do with it because this one t-shirt is not going to be the only thing you can do with a t-shirt from your home. You're going to have a lot of fabric here that you can do other things for your smart doll with or other things around the house. I'm going to set mine right here where you can see. I'm going to take a pin and pin mine down. Would you like a pin, John? Um, or are you just going to do the pen method? No, yeah, I'm gonna trace this. My suggestion for tracing, he's using a friction pen, so it's erasable, as we've said before. My suggestion for tracing is just to make like dashes or marks all along it and do it in a light fashion so that you don't are pull on the fabric while you're doing it. He's going to be done long before me. Yeah, I'm finding the dots are actually with this pen at least doing a good job of getting ink down quickly without moving anything so while he's finishing tracing i'm just going to go ahead and start cutting mine out all right this is not a, well it probably is a race now when you're cutting out if it's not quite perfectly straight don't worry about it and it's but it's better to have fabric coming out that you can see rather than cutting it in too small so you can see i actually have a little bit of fabric coming out from the edge of my pattern. Mistake number one, these are paper scissors. I gave you my good scissors too. <laughs> I've been anxious to try some Kai scissors, but what we are using right now are Ginger. Yeah, doing this immediately next to you is challenging. Well, I am almost done, so. And I can 
set my pieces aside. So before we start hand sewing, when you're putting this together, you want to make sure that you are doing it right sides together. I've got one here right side up with my nice hem and I'm going to lay one with its right side facing it. So the right sides are touching each other and the ugly piece is visible on both sides. So basically turning the t-shirt inside, inside out. out. Right. If you didn't start with it inside out, which we didn't, you want to make sure that it, it's inside out now. So the next thing you're going to do, John, you're actually going to be able to see this a lot better than I am. I'm actually going to have to put pins in mine um, because I can't, I don't have a pen that can mark it, but you want to actually take your pattern piece and mark your A point. Okay. So you're saying I can just do that with the pen. Yeah. Uh, both sides, correct? Both of them. Thank you. So the next step is going to be to stitch the shoulders together from the end of the sleeve up to our three inch point. And we're going to do this with a threaded needle and you're going to use, use about 24 inches of thread because if you use more than that, like if you're attempted to use enough thread to complete the entire project, it will be too long and has a really bad tendency to tangle. Even people who hand sew a lot will actually uh, measure their thread to a smaller length because it's easier to work with. It's much better to have to keep threading your needle than it is to have to pull out knots. You say that because you like threading needles. Uh, yeah. Or are used to it. I used to hate threading needles. Well, the worse my vision gets, the more I hate threading needles. That part I've got down, it's the the hand dexterity. So I'm gonna lick my thread so that it's nice and uh, it stays nice and straight. And I'm gonna push it through my needle. Then I'm gonna take my thread and pull it all the way through and get my ends to meet. So we're doubling our thread. And then we're going to take the thread and you're gonna wrap it around your finger a couple of times. Or don't do it too tight, just a couple of times. Then you're gonna take it and you're just kinda kind of twist it in your fingers until you've actually pulled that loop off of your index finger and you just kind of make a make a ball with it with the thread in your fingers and then you pull back and when you pull back it makes a knot and you can see my knot right there okay now we're going to take the edges of our fabric and you can start in either direction you want really i'm starting at the end of my sleeve and i'm going to try and line up my fabric edges and I'm gonna stay fairly close to the edge of my fabric. Now we wanna use some because we don't want holes to appear when we put tension on the fabric later when we're pulling it onto the doll or whatever, but you don't want uh, to go past like a quarter of an inch. I'm working at I think about an eighth of an inch at this moment. Pull it through, loop my, my, my thread over the edge of my fabric and bring my needle back up. So I'm making a loop around the edge of my fabrics. And you want to keep these fairly close together. I would say probably somewhere around a sixteenth of an inch. And you're just going to keep repeating that same step. You're basically overcasting the edge of the fabric. Just like it would look, think about what it looks like on your t-shirts and on your uh, garments where they have that loop of thread that goes around the edge of the fabric. Those are usually done on a serger or a cover stitch machine, but we're just doing this by hand. As you're stitching, make your stitches tight, but not too tight. You don't want um, to pucker the fabric too much. And we are just going to continue to sew until we get to the edge of our neckline. And my fabric will be well puckered. And you know what? If it ends up a little puckered, it'll probably still be cute. That's what I love about this top. So. Oh. You're right behind me. Yes. And you're and much was, neater than I am too. Uh, but I was also working the entire time you were threading your needle. <laughs> <laughs> My stitches, these are not the beautiful stitches of the world. These are uh, just very, very basic. I'm, I'm kind of staying very relaxed with this project because I want it to be something that you can just do. 
I could also throw this on my sewing machine or my serger very easily and make a very nice, neat seam. So the, what we're gonna do here is we don't want our threads to unravel. So we have to knot them off. And what we're going to do is a really easy way to knot off the fabric, which is to make one more stitch the way that we've been doing it. But instead of bringing our loop all the way in tight, we're going to bring it up until it's about that big. You can see it's about the size of my finger. And I'm going to bring my thread around and push my needle through that loop and make a knot. I, I have uh, two little... You have two little left? Two little left. I'm sure if I'm careful, pull back as it tightens and as soon as I can get through it. There. And just for just to be extra secure, let's do that one more time right in the same spot. <laughs> oh, you're pressing your luck. Put your th thread through your loop and pull tight. Then you can cut that off. And then we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to do a little more stitching, repeat the exact same process. Thread your needle, make your knot, and then stitch your three inch shoulder seam. One thing I will mention is that we will be putting a link in the description to a proper hand sewing tutorial if you want to know how to do this properly and make it extra neat and do, you know, hand stitching that you can take to, uh, you know, hemming your own clothes and mending, etc. I I tend to not do that if I can avoid it. Okay, so once you have completed your shoulder seams. Gosh, the stitching is horrible. Um, <laughs> John's, your, John, yours looks so it's nice. Up. I'm not kidding. The reason I had you mark that extra quarter inch at the neckline was so that you can actually turn it down for a hem if you want to, all the way around at about a quarter of an inch. And you can stitch along that using a back stitch or a running stitch, something that will be flat um, and again, you will see that in the description as to how to do that. I'm not going to go into that right now because what we're doing is making the really basic version. The other place that you can do a hem would be on the edge of your sleeves. So when you open this out flat, the way we have it right now with just the shoulders done, you can turn in your sleeve edge about a quarter of an inch and stitch that with some sort of flat stitch. But we're not going to do that either. We're going to keep this nice and simple. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to use the same process that you use for the shoulders and you're going to stitch your entire curve that goes from your sleeve to your hem. And we're just going to go ahead and do that. So once you've finished your stitching, you should have something that looks like this, hopefully with much neater stitches than mine. Wait, did you do both sides? Yeah. I'll just be over here. Hey, yours is going to be way prettier than mine. I went fast and I used white thread so you can actually see a lot of my stitching. But um, if you use the proper color thread and you're more precise and, you know, do neater stitches, you will end up with something that looks sort of like this little tiny pair of panties. So you have your neckline and your bottom hem all done and your sleeves and both sides have been done and I am going to show you a completed version that I did already. Here is Miss Harper and one of my favorite ones that I made out of an old t-shirt of mine. How cute is that? And if you take a look at it you can see there's a lot of other things you could do. You could extend the length and make her like a little uh, sleep dress or something to go over a bathing suit. Um, and you can change your necklines as I referred to earlier. You could actually curve the front neckline. You can lengthen the sleeves. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. I actually, while I was cutting this one out, uh, the black one out, I realized that I could actually take a strap from the tank top 
and use it on her shoulder. So actually create a shoulder strap for the top. So there's a lot of things to do. Take a look at your fabric, take a look at whatever garment you're cutting up and see what other things you can make with it. Um, I will probably be doing more of these. This was really fun. It reminded me of when I was a kid and my Barbie dolls used to wear dresses made out of my grandmother's handkerchiefs, things like that. <laughs> oh, for the dolls. I said my Barbies used to wear dresses <laughs> made out of my yeah. grandmother's handkerchiefs. I wish I still had some of her hand. They were hand embroidered handkerchiefs and I didn't keep them. No, of course not. You don't know the value until it's gone. Yeah. So there we go. That's that's pretty cool. I like, I mean, obviously well, you could do this on machine. Yeah. You can do this being much more careful. Um, so the quality on this can vary, but even rough quality, you have a piece for your wardrobe that can really easily pull off that like, um, well, I would say wabi-sabi, but like even beyond that, just like that style is a really nice style. I think of- It's um, on trend, I mean. Yeah, I think of uh, um, a couple years ago or whatever, I had that, that rag and bone t-shirt that was just soft and, and, drapey. and drapey and really rough hewn, had big sort of uh, thick, fuzzy external seams and things like that. Like Yeah, and this is like, you know, it looks kind of like she stole a t-shirt from her boyfriend or her brother or or her dad and cut the neck out and cut the cut the bottom off and made it into something that was fitted for her. I like it. How's yours coming along? Almost done? Uh, almost done with one side. <laughs> He's a lot neater and more precise than I am. I am, that is a very nice way to say I am far more anal retentive. <laughs> Okay, so that's it from me and John and Harper. Um, if you like this project and if you make one, you can uh, follow me on Instagram at myladydisdain with underscores and tag me and use the hashtag, let's go with disdain T. Disdain T E E. I will put it on the screen. Okay. And you can follow John at Smart Doll Folio for my Smart Doll photography and uh, such things. <laughs> and uh, if you really enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, comment, do all of the YouTube things. We really appreciate your support. Thanks. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.